All right. So today we are going to be talking about offline mode. Um, and what we're going to be doing is kind of going over our two different parts. Uh, the first part will be looking at how circulators will be conducting circulation transactions offline. The second part will be looking at how managers can then um, bring those transactions back online and upload them into Evergreen once we are live again after the upgrade. So just as a reminder, the upgrade will be happening um, November 1st, so that's a Friday. You will go through Friday as normal, logging into live Evergreen. When you leave for the day and you shut down Evergreen everywhere, after all of our libraries have closed for that day, we'll begin the upgrade that evening. Um, the upgrade will probably be complete by Sunday. We will put up an announcement when it is complete. Um, and at that point, you'll be able to log back into live Evergreen, um, but it will be the upgraded version, which is 3.13. If you were unable to attend my upgrade webinar from last week where we went over some of the changes you can expect, that is up on YouTube. So you can go ahead and watch that whenever you have a chance um, in order to get a little bit more information about what to expect with the upgrade. Now, um, for those of you who have not been through an upgrade before, um, I'll just go over a little bit of information about what offline mode is doing. So offline mode is basically an option that allows libraries to continue to conduct circulation transactions when they don't have access to the internet. So if your internet goes out for some reason, offline mode is still available for you. And what offline mode does is it basically um, records a list of transactions. So a patron comes up to the desk, you scan their card, it records their barcode, and then you scan the items they're checking out and it records the barcodes for each of those. This is a static list. It is um, nothing is happening to this list on the back end. It is simply growing each time you scan a barcode. Because you are offline, there's no way for Evergreen to actually check uh, the validity of those barcodes. So if a patron is expired, um, Evergreen does not know that. It will just record their barcode exactly as it's scanned. If something is misscanned, then Evergreen actually will not be able to catch that either. So it is very important that you are um, being very diligent when you're scanning items, uh, just so that you don't have any kind of misscan. Um, in addition to the sort of front end action where Evergreen is recording a static list of transactions, once you go back online, you have the ability to take that list that Evergreen recorded and upload it, and that will make those transactions essentially real. Um, if anything was misscanned or there is some issue that would have um, caused that transaction to fail had, it, had you been live, then um, you'll get a little error report. Sometimes those errors are easy to kind of fix. You can tell what happened and you can fix it. Sometimes they're they're not. Um, but we typically, if as long as everyone has been very careful over the over the course of the process, um, errors aren't too abundant. So we are going to talk about how to work within offline mode as a circulator. And um, then we'll move into what to do once we go back online. So circulation transactions are honestly quite straightforward once you know what to do. Um, one thing to be aware of is prior to going offline, make sure your workstations and work lo working locations are ready to go. This is not the time to set up a new computer on your circulation desk because what offline mode does is it not only records the barcodes of the patron's card and the items that you're scanning, it also records where the transaction took place. And the way that it does that is based on the working location that has been selected for that, um, that computer. So make sure that you know which computers will be used while you're offline. And we do actually recommend that you designate uh, maybe a smaller number than usual. If you normally have four or five computers at your circulation desk going, we recommend that you take that down to just one or two, as long as you feel that you can accommodate your patron volume. Um, with that, just because the fewer computers that you have to 
record transactions on, the, the more likely you are to get a complete picture of your transactions when you go in to upload them afterwards. Um, so make sure you've designated the computers that will be providing uh, circulation services while you are offline and make sure that those computers have had have been logged into Evergreen before and have basically had a workstation set up on them. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second when you're offline. So once you've done that, um, then you'll be ready to actually engage in those transactions. Just a couple of notes about what workstations and working locations mean, especially for those of you who may be new to this. Uh, workstations are the computer where work is being done. Um, so essentially it's you know it's your circulation computer um most of our libraries have designated specific computers for circulation and they have them named something like you know circ 1 circ 2 they may have it related to the branch where they are as well working locations are the organizational unit where transactions are being conducted so this is um you know basically your branch this is how evergreen will determine which policies to use for transactions. Now, when you're live in Evergreen, this happens at the point of scanning. Evergreen says, all right, this is, I'm at this branch, this is this type of material and this type of patron. I'm gonna put all three of those pieces of information together to determine how this item should circulate. When you're offline, Evergreen's not able to do that. So you as the circulator determine the due date and determine that something is allowed to be checked out. If you have said, you know, once you've set the due date and you have said that this patron can check out this material, that is all Evergreen needs to record this transaction. However, if that is against one of your local policies, um, you may get a message about that upon the point of upload. It won't actually stop the transaction from going through at that point because you've already essentially okayed it. So it'll let that transaction go through even if it wouldn't have normally. So something to be aware of. But making sure that that working location is set correctly is important because when you upload, that will show that that circulation happened at that library. So make sure that you're at the correct branches. This shouldn't be too, too much of a hassle for anyone. For the most part, this should be how you're set up. The only reason that it is worth checking is in case there may have been any sort of uh, browser reset or anything like that recently on the computers you'll be using for circulation. All right. Um, so before you go offline, um, as I said, make sure you designate the computers that you'll be using during your offline mode. Um, and as I said, we do recommend limiting that to to the fewest number that you feel can accommodate your patron volume over the course of a weekend. Um, log into each. Make sure that each of them have a registered workstation. If they don't, for whatever reason, go ahead and register one. Um, make sure that if you are registering a new workstation that you have checked out at least one item um, live prior to going offline, um, just to make sure that everything is working correctly. Once you're ready, um, you don't need to navigate to offline mode because when you come in on Saturday, if you're open on Saturday, it's going to pop you directly into offline. But if you did want to check uh, that offline mode is working. You'll want to navigate to the offline mode from the circulation menu. And at um, actually prior to going offline, you want to do this just to check and make sure that the workstation and working location are accurate. Um, once you've done all that, you're ready to go offline. You can just shut down your computer as you normally would on Friday, and it's going to pop you into offline mode on Saturday. Um, at that point, you shouldn't need to do much. You'll already be on the checkout tab. If uh, you were doing this from online mode, then um, then you would want to navigate into the checkout tab because it's going to start you off on a different tab. And we'll walk through this in just a moment. Um, I would recommend that you bookmark um, the offline mode page just because um, that way you always can get directly to it if you need it. Um, depending on how you normally get to Evergreen, you know, you may not need to do that navigation step, but it's always a good idea to have that bookmark just in case. So I do recommend that. Um, 
you may want to also ensure that if you normally have individual circulators who log in to their specific personal workstation at the circulation desk, I'd recommend against doing that and instead having sort of a generic workstation for circulation. Now, most of our libraries do use generic circulation workstations, um, but just something to keep in mind if that is not what you do. So let's go ahead and take a look at these steps of the process. I'm just gonna do this slightly differently so that I can keep my tabs up. All right, so I am in Evergreen, live online Evergreen, um, and I need to change my password. In order to get to offline mode, I wanna come up here to my circulation menu. Prior to doing that, I'm going to show you how you can check your workstation. Obviously, if you are logged in, you are at a workstation. It won't let you get to this point without being at a workstation, but you can check it by coming up here to the top right corner. The part in all caps is your working location, so that refers to your branch. And then the second part, which may be formatted any number of ways, depending on how it was set up, um, that refers to the workstation that you are on. To get to offline mode, I come up here to my circulation menu and I come down here to offline circulation, which is the last option in the menu. If you have a smaller screen um, and you have your screen resolution where this is where everything's quite large, you may not see this option. If that's the case, if you're opening up the circulation menu and you do not see offline circulation showing up, I would recommend clicking control hyphen on your keyboard, and that's gonna shrink your, your screen size um, until you can basically get it to the point that you can see this full menu because the menu does not really scroll. You notice that if I'm scrolling here while the menu's open, I'm scrolling the page behind it, not the menu itself. Um, so you do want to make sure that you can see the full menu in order to get to offline mode. So I'm going to click on offline circulation and I see up here at the top that my workstation is set to pack, which was, of course, the the branch that was listed up in that top right corner and that my working or I'm sorry, my working location is set to pack and that my workstation is set to this particular workstation within pack. Now, this is why you need to make sure that you've done this ahead of time, because once you are offline, you can't set that up. So just make sure that that is showing up for you before you shut down on Friday. Um, if it is, though, you're good to go. Um, this checkout tab, this is where you will be when you when you are offline. You won't see this session management tab if you are actively offline. Right now, when you come in, you'll see session management. And if I click on checkout and I click proceed, you'll see that session management tab has disappeared and I am now officially in offline mode. Um, so that is the process of making sure that you're ready to go. And I recommend that you do that probably the Friday before, maybe the Thursday. I wouldn't do it too much before you go into offline, just in case there's some sort of browser reset or, um, you know, your cash clears or something like that. Uh, between the point that you check it and the point that you go offline. Um, so I would just recommend that you kind of hang on to that until just before going offline. Um, before we start doing any transactions, let's just talk about what the process is. It's really quite straightforward. The first two are sort of uh, relatively obvious, I think, um, you scan your barcodes, you scan your patron barcode, and you scan your item barcodes. You'll also set your due dates at that time. The second one is how you print receipts, and I'll show you how you do that. But the third one is the most important one to remember, and that's to save your session, because nothing is being recorded in any kind of database or anything like that. The only way that you can ensure that these transactions are being recorded for further for future upload is to make sure that you're saving your session. Just like if you were doing this in Excel rather than offline mode and you were typing in a barcode and then typing in a, a book barcode, you would wanna save that Excel file, not just close it out. Um, you wanna do the same thing in here. So if I am in on offline mode, uh, the process to check something out, I come up here to my due date and I have two options for this. I can use the calendar widget to choose a due date manually or I can choose this offset option. So let's say your typical circulation period is 14 days. I can just choose that from the menu um, and that's gonna automatically set it. 
if somebody comes up with a DVD that has a different or some other material that has a different circulation period, then I can, you know, switch it manually with the calendar widget, or I can switch it, uh, you know, to today plus three days or something like that. If the option that I need happens to be in this drop down, obviously, a lot of our libraries have 21 day and 28 day circulation periods, and those are not available in here. Um, but if you do have 1 that is available in here, you can use that and it will work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this manually. So today is the 16th. I'm going to set it for November 6th. And that's going to stay as my due date for any material I scan until I change it. So I'm going to turn that offset off oh, and reset this. The next thing I'm going to do is scan my patron barcode. And then I'm going to scan my item barcode. And you notice that all I did with this patron barcode is put it in. I didn't hit enter or submit or anything. There was no check process um, because it's not checking anything. Whatever you put in this box is what will be recorded as the patron's barcode. Now, my item barcode, I'm going to go ahead and put that in here as well. And once again, there's no check happening. Whatever I put in here is what will be recorded. Um, if this were like a non catalog type, like a paperback or something like that. If you're 1 of the libraries that uses that um, option, you do have the ability to come in here and select a specific type and then just put in the numbers that are being, you know, somebody's taking out 3 paperbacks. You can record that as well. Um, but for my item barcode, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to select that. I want to print a receipt. Once I've checked this box, it'll stay on. So I don't have to do this for each transaction. But I do the first time need to make sure that I'm checking this. And then I'm going to click checkout and all that's happened is that it's basically it's recorded this stuff. Um, it's going to write it to a file once I save it. So right now I can continue checking things out to Sarah. And, um, you know, check out multiple things to her. Um, and then once I'm done, I can save my transactions. At the point that I save, that's when the receipt will print. So, um, you know, if you've selected print receipt, once you've completed the full set of transactions for a patron and you click save, that receipt will come out for you. Um, you notice that they go away. They're no longer saved over here. They have been written to a file that will later be uploaded. Now, if you forget to click save, not only will you not get a receipt, but if you shut down prior to saving, then those go away. They're not being saved anywhere. So it is really important that you are hanging on to these, that you're clicking that save button. You don't have to do it after each transaction. You can, you know, help three or four patrons before clicking save. You won't give them receipts, but you can do that. I recommend you don't. I recommend that you close out each patron transaction by clicking save transactions, just to kind of make sure that nothing gets lost. Um, so that's my recommendation. Now, um, let's say I finished with Sarah and she comes back up and says, can you reprint that receipt for me? I lost it already. You do have the ability to do that. You can click this reprint last receipt. You cannot go further back than the last one though. Um, if the next patron comes up, I can go ahead and um, put in their barcode. I can give them, um, you know, I can check out items to them. Let's say I miss scan a barcode. Um, and I check it out. That's clearly not a real barcode, but Evergreen didn't didn't catch it. Um, it's going in there. It's going in that list. I won't find out it's an issue until um, until I go to upload my transactions once we're back in live Evergreen. So just be very, very mindful. Um, if I were to, let's say that I check out the same item twice. So I already checked out this barcode to Sarah. If I scan the same barcode again, once again, nothing happens. I'm not getting anything that's saying this is already checked out to somebody. Um, it's just, it's going on, which means if a patron comes up with an item that has been sitting on the shelf after having not been properly checked in, if a patron comes in with an item that is currently designated as lost or missing, that's not going to get noted. It's just going to go forward as though it were a regular circulation transaction. 
Um, also be aware that holds aren't really uh, possible here. Obviously, if you have the hold on the shelf for a patron, you can check it out to them. Um, and that checkout will go through just fine, but you won't be pulling holds or receiving new holds while you are offline. So during that, that weekend where we are offline, um, holds are kind of on hold. Um, but if you do have them on your hold shelf for a patron, you can go ahead and check it out to them. So, once I finished with this uh, patron, I go ahead and save my transactions again. This will print another receipt and the transaction list goes away um, and it has been saved to the file that I will later upload. Um, there are other tabs up here. We recommend that you don't use any of them. Um, avoid renewals. Uh, what we would actually recommend is that as you prepare for this period of being offline, if you are able to um, reset due dates so that they are not happening while you are offline. That's probably ideal because then you don't have to worry about renewals failing. Um, if you're not able to do that, that's, you know, it, it won't break anything, but if you can do that, uh, I, I recommend it. Uh, please don't check anything in while offline. Um, it's just too much room for error. In that process, instead, what I recommend that you do, if you are able to change it so that nothing is due. Uh, during the offline period, um, you know, that's fine. You'll just check items, set items aside as they come in and then check them in once you are back online. If you do have due dates over this period of time, then um, you can, you know, as items come in, make sure that you're labeling the date they were returned. Most of our libraries, this will only be one day that this is an issue since we don't have very many libraries open on Sunday. and. The upgrade doesn't start till after close off on Friday. So it's mostly just Saturday, but if you are open on Sunday as well, and we are not back up on Sunday, I recommend labeling the cart with the date of return so that when you go in to check items in, you can backdate for the correct date. Um, and that way, anybody who is overdue won't be marked as overdue. So um, again, just don't use the check-in. Um, Function don't use any of these functions, but especially not the check in 1 um, and don't register your patrons. Um, so, checkout is the only thing you'll be doing offline. Uh, a couple things to remember, make sure you set your working location prior to going offline. Make sure you check barcodes as you are scanning. Um, you know, if something is showing up as too short, um, rescan it. Um, make sure you save your transactions. Otherwise, they'll be lost. They, they, it'll be like they never happened. And that is the process of the circulators checking items out while offline. Are there any questions related to um, circulation? All right, well, we are going to move. Oh, can we still search the catalog for books? Um, you will not be able to search the staff side. Um, you know what? I'm actually not certain what the OPAC will look like while you are offline. It will be uh, down. It will uh, be down. Yeah. So you could uh, go to our development environment and just search that, uh, the public OPEC there. It's not, you know, it's sort of uh, a little bit out of date. Um, but that is, is sort of a snapshot at 1 moment in time. Um, and that could be a, a sort of a stand in, but it is just a snapshot from the past. Um, so it's not going to be 100% accurate, but. Worst case scenario. If you do need to find your library's development server, you can go into our knowledge books and search for the word dev. And then that is going to be in administration manual for libraries, your library's development server. And I'll go ahead and put this link in the chat. Nope. Also, you can just go to the generic 1, which is dev.ncardinal.org. 
Um, it's not as pretty, but as yours, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, but you can go directly to yours uh, from this page. Um, as Benjamin said, it's out of date, but it, it'll at least give you an idea. All right, are there any other questions related to circulation or general functionality while offline? All right, well, we are going to go ahead and move into talking about how to import transactions once we're back online. Um, and so this is something that um, I would recommend a single person at the library or at the branch kind of be in charge of. Um, I do believe you have to have admin permissions to do it. Um, there are two options for it. You can do it at the individual computers where the transactions were conducted, or you can export the list of transactions from each computer and then import them all kind of at the same time on one computer. Um, I'm not sure one option is any easier than the other, um, but you are welcome to do either. Um, the exporting and then importing it does have a couple extra steps to it. Um, I'm not sure it's necessarily more difficult, but there are a few extra steps, but we'll talk about both of them. If you do have further questions on the circulation functions, feel free to put those in. Um, I'll either answer them as they come in if, you know, if I'm able to, or we can talk about them at the end of the session as well. Um, so discussing managing sessions, and that's what this is called when you are, um, importing those transactions when you're back online. It's managing a session. So there are two options, as I said, we'll start by talking about processing on the same workstation. So if you have, you know, one circulation computer that you have left functional during offline, then I would recommend that you process on that computer just um, it, because it's, it's right there. <laughs> um, there's only one to do. If you have more than one, then you may want to consider doing the other option. Um, but the process is similar in both cases. We're going to start by uh, processing as though this were on the same workstation where the transactions were conducted. To do this, um, we will do something called creating a session. We will then upload pending transactions process those transactions, and then manage exceptions. So the session is basically, um, it refers to the, the entire period in which you were offline. It would be referred to as an offline session, even if it was multiple days. Um, pending transactions are those transactions that were conducted while offline. It's that file that has been saved um, as you've conducted transactions. Processing the transactions is the matter of taking what has been uploaded and actually applying it to Evergreen, actually checking out those materials. And then managing exceptions is the final step where you go in and see what didn't work properly. So this is typically a result of something being misscanned. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna start by going back online. Um, which means I do have to uh, log back in. And you'll notice when you come in on Monday morning um, on those computers where offline transactions were processed or were conducted, you'll have this little yellow box when you go to log in, letting you know that there are unprocessed offline transactions. So that is a very important hint that transactions actually were conducted and saved and are, are ready to go. If you believe that on a computer, you have been sitting there processing transactions all weekend and you can come in on Monday and you don't see this box, that might be cause for concern. Um, go ahead and move forward with what I'm doing now and see if you do have uh, transactions to process, but be aware that if you don't see this box, that could mean that something was not properly saved. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. And um, I'm going to go to my circulation menu and offline circulation again, but this time I'm not actually going to go offline. So remember before we went into the checkout button or the checkout tab and that sort of popped us fully offline. 
I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to stay in this session management tab, which means that I am online. I am in Evergreen live right now, um, but I'm working within the offline mode. So I'm going to come down here and I see that I have um, in the sub page under session management, I have two tabs, pending transactions and offline sessions. So pending transactions shows me this is the list of all of the transactions that I conducted while offline. So I actually have this list right here visible to me. I am going to start, though, by coming into the offline sessions tab. And I am going to create a session and I will call it. Training one. And I have had problems before where sessions just don't want to properly create for me. Um, is Courtney on this call? Looks like she is. Yeah. Um, I don't know if she is. I am. am. Yeah. Sorry. All right. What am I doing wrong here? <laughs> Let's see. So you are. Let's see, you need to type in the name. Yep. That's the training se session. Okay. All right, now let's see. You are, hmm, it says it's failed. Mm -hmm. Try refresh. You okay, may so also oh, go ahead. want to try it off of, um, you know, off the development environment. Just if you just go yeah. to the production environment. Okay. There may be something about the way we have you know, develop, dev set up. Oh, I wonder if it's because I've called, I've used that name before. Yeah, if it's already in use, that may be the case. Yeah. All right, let me try that. That's probably what's going on. Oh, I've never done that. That's too many words. All right. No, that failed as well. Okay. Um, okay. So apologies for the diversion. Um, to create a session, you do what I've been doing, um, but apparently Deb does not like me uh, setting that up. So um, we would we would set that up by coming into create session, giving your session a name, and then hitting OK, continue. Once you have a session, you'll see these little buttons here um, for upload and process. And I'm going to have to redo some transactions here. All right, so um, I would come into my training session and I have this little button here for upload and process. You'll see the upload is available to me when I hover over it, I get the little hand process is uh, grayed out and I can't click on it because I cannot process anything until I've uploaded it. So I'm going to go ahead and click upload. And it's going to take the sessions that are pending, the ones that were showing up in my pending transactions tab, and upload them. So you'll see that it's uploaded two of them. Those uh, transactions have not gone into Evergreen yet. It knows 
what I want to to process, but it has not processed them. So, you know, this is a chance for you to just double check that everything is correct. If you knew that there were a certain number of transactions, then you can see that number has uploaded. Um, once you have uploaded, then you hit process. Um, and so this is when Evergreen will actually attempt to check out these materials and you'll see that one of them worked um, and one of them did not. So we'll, you'll scroll down here to the bottom of this page where you have the exception list. And this is where it will tell you um, basically why something didn't happen. So with this particular one, the barcode was incorrect. I know that because I put an X at the end. Um, and so I get my error message essentially is copy not found because the barcode was incorrect. So it's unable to do anything. Now, if I have the ability to fix that barcode, somehow I've memorized barcodes or something, then I can do that. Um, so I can uh, come in here to the item or um, to debug and I can see um, information about what's going on. Um, I can see that the I issue was the item was not found, but if I click on patron, it's going to take me into the patron's account. So I could take that actual barcode uh, that failed and I could uh, rescan it in here. So I could basically force that transaction to go through. Now, most of the time, if it is an issue where a barcode was scanned in improperly, um, Obviously, there's not a lot you can do about that because you probably don't know what the barcode was supposed to be. Um, there may be other exceptions where you're able to fix it, you know, um, where the item was marked missing or in some sort of state where it wouldn't be able to be checked out. And that's why you're getting an error. And that's something that you can go in and fix. So that's why it's so important to check those barcodes as you're scanning uh, because that's not a super fixable error, whereas some of the errors where the issue is with, um, you know, something wouldn't ordinarily have checked out if you were doing this live, that's an error that you can't deal with. Um, so just, just uh, another plug for being super vigilant on that one. But that's basically the process of, um, of managing sessions when they have been on the same computer. So, um, you know, I can manage my exceptions if I'm able to. Um, and then um, basically then at that point I'm done. Everything that was processed properly will now show up in, in Evergreen. And I can look at my patron's account and I can see actually that, yes, she did check out this book um, with the due date of November 6th, which is what I set manually. Um, and you can see that it, it was recorded as being at, um, the branch where my working location was and at the workstation. So that's why the, that's one of the reasons that those things are important um, as you're setting things up. So that is processing on the same workstation. Exporting to a new workstation is very similar. So if I were to go into dev uh, where I have these pending transactions um, and let's say that I'm, I've gone out to uh, my circulation desk and I'm going to each of the computers that was used during out offline. I would want to do this step at each of those computers. And that is to come up here to the pending transaction. So I've gone into the offline mode from my circulation menu um, and I'm under session management. I'm going to click on this export transactions button. So I've done that and I have basically downloaded a file that has all of this information in it. Then I can go back into, you know, into my computer or the computer where I've determined that I'm going to be doing this processing. And from there, I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to come into my circulation menu and go to offline mode. And in offline mode, I'm going to be in session management. But now where I have no transactions because none were conducted on this computer, I can click the button to import transactions. And that's going to be under downloads. And so I import them and now that list of pending transactions that I had in my on one computer is now showing up on another. So my import is ready to go. Um, and at that point, the rest of the process is the same. So I could, you know, go to two or three computers, export the transactions from each of those, then go to my computer and import all three files and have all of those transactions together in one place. Then go into my offline session, 
Um, I'm going to create another new session. And I'm going to upload. And so I've got five in this case, and that should, oh, they're not showing up here anymore. They're not pending anymore. Um, but that should be, I think, about the number I did. I did three for Sarah and two for Sally. Um, and once again, they're not processed yet, but I can go ahead and process them. And you'll see that only two of them worked. So let's come down to our exceptions list and see why. It looks like um, some of them failed because they all, all but one failed because the patron barcode was incorrect. One of them also failed because the item barcode was incorrect. And it, it looks like it caught that error first. So that's the error it's been giving me. But obviously, if, if this barcode failed here, then it also failed here. Um, so it did process a couple of transactions, which is odd it shouldn't have uh, because nothing nothing should have worked but um so i could fix this you know if i if i knew you know what the barcode should have been i can come in and i can fix that by simply manually conducting that transaction live um in this case um you know with a situation like this you're almost certainly not going to be able to do that but you'll see that um it does give you enough information about what happened that you you could at least sort of follow the um, follow the path to figure out what happened. Um, so, you know, for example, if you have the asset copy not found, meaning the item barcode was incorrect, you could simply go into uh, this patron's account. Of course, this patron does not exist in in production, but you could go into this patron's account and you can put a note on her account just saying item was checked out during offline mode, um, was not able to be uploaded or something like that. Um, but that's the process. Um, so it is very similar whether you're doing it on the computer where the transactions were conducted or whether you are going to be doing it on a separate workstation. Um, the only difference is that you want to ex export those transactions from the original workstation first and then um, import them once you're on your other computer. So obviously you'll need to be able to share that file um, in whatever way that you can do that. And that's the process of managing sessions. Uh, again, there's not a lot to it. Um, it's just a matter of being very, uh, very careful as you're going through and um, making sure you're paying attention. But are there any questions about managing transactions or lingering questions about circulation transactions? Um, as always, you know, we are here to answer questions. If you come in on Monday morning after the upgrade and you're attempting to import your transactions and you're running into issues, you know, please submit a ticket. We'll be happy to help you with that. Um, if you are struggling with offline mode over the weekend, um, you know, I think being being on base camp and making sure that uh, you have access to that is probably a good idea because uh, you can ask questions there if one of the Cardinal team members doesn't get to it right away. And I'm sure we'll be kind of keeping an eye on things over that weekend. Um, but if we don't get to it right away, a colleague from another library may. Um, so just, I would recommend being, being on base camp for this, uh, for this process, but, um, once you know what to do, it's fairly straightforward. It's just a matter of being aware of what you're doing, paying attention. Um, if I have one piece of advice, it's make sure you save your transactions. If you fail to save your transactions, then there's nothing Evergreen can do. And those, those transactions are just kind of lost to the void. So uh, if you do have questions between now and when we go offline, please feel free to send them my way. And um, hopefully everything goes smoothly. But otherwise, I think we are all done here. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you.